Good afternoon. Welcome to Sacred Hearts Parish. My name is Sean Brenner, and we are glad that you are with us today. It is with hope that we will all continue to grow together as a community of believers to celebrate God's great gifts to us, God's Word and the Eucharist. Today we celebrate the 26th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our presider is Father John, assisted by Deacon Eric. Our Mass intention is for Elspeth Donnelly, and our second collection is for the pilot. Today's readings speak of our freedom to choose to obey or disobey God. God desires our union with him, and God allows us to respond to his love as we choose. There is hope for those of us who recognize our mistakes and rely on God's mercy. As followers of Jesus, we are called to walk in humility. God is waiting for us there. Let us now stand and give praise and glory to our God. prayer together in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We gather here this beautiful afternoon in our life to praise God, to thank God for all the blessings of life. We also come mindful of our faults and our failings of life. Let's now pause briefly, look into our heart, renew our week, and we seek God's forgiveness, God's mercy, God's love, this day. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to the lasting life. Amen. Let's now praise our God together. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with, with the, the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who manifest your almighty power, above all by pardoning and showing mercy, bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us, and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, you say the Lord's way is not fair. Hear now, house of Israel. Is it my way that is unfair? Or rather, are not your ways unfair? When someone virtuous turns away from virtue to commit iniquity and dies, it is because of the iniquity he committed that he must die. But if he turns from the wickedness he has committed and does what is right and just, he shall preserve his life. Since he has turned away from all the sins he has committed, he shall, he shall surely live, and he shall not die. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any solace in love, any participation in the Spirit, any compassion and mercy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, with the same love, united in heart, thinking one thing. Do nothing out of selfishness or out of vainglory. Rather, humbly regard others as more important than yourselves, each looking out not for his own interests, but also for those of others. Have in you the same attitude that is also in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priests and elders of the people, what is your opinion? A man had two sons. He came to the first and said, son, go out and work in the vineyard today. He said in reply, I will not, but afterwards changed his mind and went. The man came to the other son and gave the same order. He said in reply, yes, sir, but did not go. Which of the two did his father's will? They answered, the first. Jesus said to them, amen, I say to you, tax collectors and prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God before you. When John came to you in the way of righteousness, you did not believe him, but tax collectors and prostitutes did. Yet even when you saw that, you did not later change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. Good afternoon, everyone. I pray you're all doing well and hanging in there, remaining strong. It's good to see you all. Today's gospel, uh, this parable, Jesus offered it um, about a week before he was um, condemned to death. And, um, you know, last week's uh, parable really made us scratch our head a little bit in terms of God's generosity and how we use our generosity and likeness to God's. But there's really no doubt this week what Jesus is telling us. And it, the, the readings, in fact, all of them remind us of the fundamental choices that you and I have in life when it comes to the Lord and when he asks us something or asks of us for something. And that's obedience, or rebellion. We'll either, we are going to either obey the will of God or we're going to be disobedient to the will of God. And it's a choice. And thankfully, the Lord gives us free will. And unfortunately, many people today choose to rebel against God. And I think if we look at the newspaper or the television, we can see what happens, what is the consequence when we rebel against the will of God. God has a plan for each and every one of us. And it's a perfect plan that leads us to perfect happiness and ultimately eternal life. But when we choose to rebel against that, unfortunately, we have to suffer the consequences. In our first reading, the prophet Ezekiel reminds us many times that there's people blame the Lord for their uh, decisions and they get angry and as a result of that anger they rebel and it's usually egged on by some injustice that they've experienced. But Ezekiel debunks any claim that God is unjust in letting the wicked perish and the virtuous live due to their actions. You know, folks, the most fundamental principle of integrity doesn't even really require the Bible. Aristotle said it so beautifully in his ethics. He says, quote, do good and avoid evil. That sums it all up. When we choose to do good, we're following the will of God. When we rebel, and we say that we know better than what the gospel teaches, or that we accept this part of church teaching but don't accept this part. We're rebelling against the will of God. And of course, this is not good. But when we are obedient and we follow the will of the Lord and we attempt every day to grow in holiness and repent of our sin, what happens? Our marriages are better. 
Our families are better because of that. Our community is better. Our parish community here at Sacred Hearts is better when we are obedient to the will of God. You know, during COVID, we've seen beautiful expressions of kindness and love and compassion and generosity, all beautiful virtues that come from where? That come from God. And we see the effect that they have. And I don't know about you, but I've seen on television oftentimes these beautiful acts of kindness can oftentimes move you to tears. And conversely, when we see evil, what happens? We fill ourselves with fear and anxiety, and we want to close ourselves away from it. Why? Because it's evil. And Jesus reminds us that we have to choose good. We have to choose obedience. Many of you might say, well, Deacon, I'm here at Mass. I'm doing my share. I'm being obedient. We have to be careful of that kind of an attitude because, frankly, in the spiritual life, faith is not checking a box and saying, I did this, I went to Mass, I checked the box, I move on to my next thing that I need to do. And we're reminded today, and St. Paul so beautifully reminds us, do nothing out of selfishness or out of vainglory, otherwise known as boastfulness. Rather, humbly regard others as more important than yourselves, each looking out not for his interests, but also for those of others. So in other words, there's more to it. This Christian life that we're called to, this path of holiness, this path to eternal life, there's more to work to be done. And sometimes we want to rebel. I don't need to go to confession. I don't, I don't need to tell the priest my sins. I don't need to go to Mass on a holy day. We have to be very careful of that, particularly as practicing Catholics, those that are committed. And your presence here today says it all. We're here because we're committed to living this life and living it well. The world, of course, is, I want to be free. I want to be me. They want to rebel. God's will is not in their plan. And unfortunately, there's a consequence to that, and we know what that is. You know, mankind, human history, has told us that we are good at rebelling, not following the will of the Father. But Jesus came and by example showed us the power and the beauty of obedience. And all we have to do here is look at the crucified Lord. And what does God do with that? Jesus, in his humility, in his obedience, fulfilling the will of the Father, what does he do? Turn something so wicked, so evil, killing our Savior on a cross. God takes that and turns it into something beautiful. Resurrection, new life, forgiveness of sin. Spiritual conversion, my friends, is not letting that inner rebellion due to sin shape our decisions and our actions. Obedience to the Father's will brings out the best that we can offer. A believer who says yes to God and says yes to God's will doesn't do it. In the end, that's rebellion. And therefore, that person goes nowhere, grows 
nowhere in the spiritual life. It's lip service. But a, a believer who says no and then does it, similar to this gospel today, we know that the believer has conquered that rebellion that's built into us and has won. And of course, the Lord we know looks down with a big smile. Because every time we do His will, every time we recite that beautiful prayer, the Our Father, Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done. That's what we are reminded of today. It's about God's will. And St. Paul, again, in his second reading, says, do not ignore your interests completely. He said to look out for others' interests. Consider them more important. And when we do that, what happens? We realize the great grace that comes from that. In our psalm today, the psalmist reminds us that God is our Savior. Isn't that good news that we can leave with today? That God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten Son into the world to save you and save me. And he is full of mercy. Thank God for that. Thank God for that. And he shows sinners the way. He shows you and me the way, and he teaches the humble his way, not our way. So my friends, let's consider this week using a little bit of our time, a little bit of our treasure for the good of others. Let's stretch this week. Let's take this gospel in and allow it to transform us in order that we might be more obedient and less rebellious. You know, when we're serving others, there's no greater antidote to sin than to serve others in love and in faithfulness. And maybe that's just a phone call this week to somebody that you haven't connected with who could be a little bit lonely Maybe that's offering a big smile to the person behind the Dunkin' Donut counter. You see, my friends, these are simple expressions of kindness. That's what the Lord wants from us. Not big and bold things, but little things. That gives him the most joy. So my friends, again, let's this week Take this beautiful gospel, this message of the glory that we gain through obedience to the Father's will. And let's be committed a little bit more this week and next week and the following week to doing God's will. And let's do less of our will. Let's now stand as you and I profess our faith together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, Begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, for whom all things were made, for us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, who was crucified in the Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended to heaven, and is he at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge living and the dead, 
and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, for to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. My friends, call to be disciples, let us now offer our prayers to the Lord in confidence, hope, and peace. For the Holy Church on earth, may the power of the Holy Spirit help us to love one another and live in unity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in positions of authority, may the Lord lead them in their efforts toward protecting all human life from conception to natural death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the underemployed and the unemployed, may God in his goodness help them find work that will provide for their needs. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all of our confirmandi who will be confirmed this weekend. We pray that the Lord continue to touch them and may the gifts of the Holy Spirit given to them at confirmation help them to grow in faith and to grow in relationship with God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For doctors, nurses, first responders, and all those working to handle this health crisis, may they be strengthened by God during this great time of need, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are suffering from the effects of the pandemic, especially those in nursing homes, assisted living facilities, May God's Holy Spirit bring them comfort and healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faith community here at Sacred Hearts, may we grow in mercy and compassion, joyfully imitating Jesus our Savior. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have gone before us marked with the sign of faith, we pray in a special way for Lillian Lavasser. May they rejoice with the saints in God's everlasting kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Elspeth Donnelly, who is especially remembered at this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the prayers and concerns we now silently call to mind. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We thank you, Almighty God, for your steadfast love and abundant grace. Listen to our prayers this day, those just spoken, those many prayers in our hearts this day. Bless our parish family, bless our world. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
pray, my friends, that my sacrifice in your merciful God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O merciful God, that this our offering be found acceptance with you, that through it the wellspring of all blessing be laid open before us in our life through Christ our Lord. My friends, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, for your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word, in all things. We sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining through a holy people, he stretched out as he has endured his passion, was to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints we praise you. With one voice we pray together. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, in a his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, but this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was into the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which we put out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the more of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks we held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together, Francis, our Pope, and Sean, our Bishop, the clergy, religious, and all your faith-filled people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. We pray this day for Elspeth Donnelly. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, may merit to be co heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen.
Let us now gather our prayers together and pray in the words our Savior taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy may always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of God. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. My friends, the peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. My friends, behold the Lamb of God, Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. The blessed those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
few announcements. Please join us Saturday, October 3rd from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. on the lawn between the church and the rectory for the annual blessing of the animals. October 4th is the Feast of St. Francis, who loved animals. Sacred Heart School is holding a socially distant walkathon to help offset the costs accrued to create a safe environment and high quality learning experience for our students. If you would like to support the school's cause, please see the bulletin for more details. Thanks, Bill, for that parish news. I really enjoy the blessing of the animals. Every year I see parakeets and bunnies, <laughs> hamsters and gerbils, you name it, we see it. So please come next uh, Saturday. I, we will see dogs and cats too. So please bring your uh, animals next week for that um, blessing. I want to share with you some news. As you may know, um, throughout the state, each city is color coded by COVID risk. Uh, I think it's gray, green, yellow, red. Right now, Havel is in the yellow, so we're, we're doing okay. I saw an article in the Tribune this past week that possibly could be going into a red because of cluster in a nursing home, other clusters in the city. If that happens, that changes our mass celebration a bit. We'll still have mass during the weekend, but it will require us for everybody who comes to mass have their temperature taken by a touchless thermometer. We do that for the volunteers and the priests anyway, every mass. But if that goes wet, if we go, if we go red Wednesday night, starting Thursday morning mass, everybody that comes to mass has their temperature taken and a roster of who's here has to be recorded. Name and phone number. So I just want to grace you for that possibility starting Thursday morning mass, the weekend, we have to follow that guideline. So please, I, I'm sure you'll cooperate fine, but just so you're not know, caught off guard. What are we doing here? So most of you come every four o'clock each week, so you're a pretty stable group. But uh, just be aware that, that may happen if you hear the news story that Averill has now gone into the red zone because of these clusters. I guess there's minimal community spread, which is good. It's just a nursing home cluster adds to our numbers. A family over here who had a gathering, they all now have five or six COVID positives. That adds to the number in our city and pushes us over from yellow to red possibly. So pray God that will not happen. If it does, there'll be two changes next week. What's your name, your phone number, zap, 98.5, okay. So we should be okay in that sense. We have two thermometers going, but uh, we'll be fine. So God bless you all. Thanks for all your support. And stay healthy, stay well, and stay safe. Let's now stand for our final prayers. Let us pray. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ. To suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Have a great week, everyone. Stay well. Good to see you for our dismissal.